Hey there, and welcome to another edition of the Alassian Demo Den. My name's Andrew and I'm a product manager from the Bitbucket Cloud team. In today's session, I'm keen to show you how we're helping customers use Bitbucket pipelines to run CI CD with their own infrastructure on a feature we call self-hosted runners. This has been a heavily requested feature by our customers as they wish to take advantage of Bitbucket Cloud whilst also leveraging their private network. So let's show you how to do that. Great, so now we're in Bitbucket Cloud and let's imagine we want to set up a Linux runner on a step of my pipeline. So what we're going to do first is go over to repository settings. Under that, we can find pipelines runners and clicking on that, we'll see two things. We'll see that we can create a repository or a workspace runner. This is really important. If we create a repository runner, it's only going to work within the context of this specific repository we're in. However, workspace runs can be applied to all repositories within that certain workspace. And for the rest of this video, that's what we're gonna do. So let's click through the workspace settings and we can quickly jump from our repository view to our workspace view and add a new runner. Clicking on the button here, we're gonna go through the setup stages. It's really important here to lay out some of the prerequisites required to creating a self-hosted runner. That's that you require a 64-bit Linux instance with at least eight gigabytes of RAM as a host for the runner. Ideally, it's capable of two time steps, but your use case might require more. Secondly, you have to have Docker installed. So let's continue with this setup here for our Linux runner. We're going to call it a test runner. And that brings us to labels. It's already listed as self-hosted and Linux. And I want to add some more labels so I can reference them within my steps. It's important to note that labels are not unique which means that when I create multiple re, um, runners, that I can reference them within my steps to get multiple runners to work. Great, and clicking next, I can see some of the run commands that are required to register this runner with my host machine. So what I need to do here is copy this command and then enter into the CLI of the host machine to register this with Bitbucket Pipelines. Next just gives me an overview of the labels I've created and how I can insert this self-hosted runner into my pipeline. But we'll go through that in just a moment. So let's click finish. Let's make sure that we have Docker opened up and let's pull up our CLI. Here you can see, that we've got our current version of Docker running and we can copy and paste the command in. It's really important to note whilst this runs that unregistered runners will only remain on the system for one week before being deleted, at which point just recreate it and get it re-registered. You can see that this command has worked successfully and that our top test runner here has now turned into an online status. You can also preview some of the other states that the runner can be in, either being unregistered, that is that command hasn't been connected up to a host machine yet and will be removed once those seven days are up, or secondly, a runner that's now offline. A runner that's offline that is currently referenced within a pipeline won't be run. Great, so let's now move over to our YAML file, our Bitbucket Pipeline's YAML file and connect up our pipeline. So here you can see I've got my Pipeline's YAML file open and ready to edit. Here I've already done a little bit of work to illustrate that unlike cloud runners, with self-hosted runners, we give you control on how to queue steps and provide detailed logs on how a runner encountered an error. To illustrate this, I've included three steps into this YAML file that showcases one, a failing runner due to a mislabeling, two, a successful runner that will start straight away, and number three, a runner that's going to be queued after the previous has started and completed its process. 
I'm happy with my edits. So I'm gonna commit this file and my pipeline will start straight away. Great, so with my pipe committed, I can now go into pipelines. Have a look at the in progress pipe that just launched. And see that the misspelt step as expected has failed. The step that we wish to start is already running. And then the one as intended is queued to follow up. Within the steps themselves, you can see details on the runner and logs for them. Finally, always note that the small arrow here indicates that this step has been executed on a self-hosted runner. It's a quick way to always check what's happening in the cloud and what's happening on your hosted machine. This is just a simple example of how to use a self-hosted runner. But of course, you can use these principles as a foundation for how to build your own pipe. Zooming forward in time, you can see that the initial and queued steps have run, whilst the one as intended has resulted in an error. And that's it for the demo on Bitbucket self-hosted runners. Please feel free to give us any feedback that you might have to help us improve. Additionally, you can look at the links down below to find out more information through our support docs. Thanks again for your time. See you next time.